We're here with Lafayette's men's basketball coach, Fran O'Hanlon, uh, coach here for uh, 22 years now, coach, where did the time go, uh, who most recently became Lafayette's uh, 300 game winner. And uh, Fran, uh, tell us what it means to you. Well, it means I've been here for a while, <laughs> you know, number one. Um, it means that I had a lot of help along the way as well. I've had, uh, in, from administrators, I have had great assistant coaches, uh, a lot of them, but uh, I've had great assistant coaches. And obviously the players have won the games for me. I had some terrific guys that uh, did what I asked them and, and worked very hard. You know, Fran, in all the years I've watched you and you and I uh, go back here a long, long time, um, I, I kind of get the sense that there are coaches who are teachers, there are coaches who are recruiters, there are coaches who are managers, um, and I think the, the best coaches are kind of a combination of all those, but in my view, Coach, you're one of the guys who, who who not only understands the game, but, but loves the game and teaches it a certain way. Uh, talk about your style and, and uh, your approach, not only to the kinds of kids you get, but, but how you see the game. Well, having grown up, I guess, in the playgrounds of Philly, and, and we always think that you want to play the game the right way, pass, cut, you know, the right person gets the shot. And this is a program and it's a school that you really have to rely on developing people within your system, uh, developing uh, to be better basketball players. We may not be beating out some schools for players, but development's a big part of it, teaching them how to play the right way. Um, and that's what we focus on, is, is just trying to teach people to play the right way. Um, and it goes back to, as I said, my upbringing and how I learned the game and uh, how I think the game should be played. I've been around three great coaches in my lifetime, uh, and, and uh, obviously uh, the guy I played for in college, he has a connection here to Lafayette, that's Roy Chipman, and my high school coach, Tom Cooney. But since coming here, uh, Butch Van Bredikoff, Pete Carrill, and, and Coach, I'll put you right in that group. Uh, uh, you know, Mike Krzyzewski, the, the Duke coach, uh, I heard him say one time that when he was asked, what advice would you give your, your colleagues, your younger guys coming up, and he said, don't let it blow your mind that there are a bunch of guys at the lower levels, even in high school, who could coach your socks off every day of the week. What do you think he meant by that? Well, I think <laughs> what he meant it was exactly what he said. Uh, you know, and I've been, I've had the good fortune, I guess you would say, of I've been a high school coach. I've, I've coached overseas. I've coached, uh, uh, you know, lots of different levels. There are some terrific, terrific uh, coaches out there that I've run across uh, X and O wise, motivation wise, development wise. I've, you know, I've plagiarized from a number <laughs> of them, you know, and, and as I learned the game. Um, you know, college coaching is different. There's a lot of other things that are involved as far as, uh, you know, administratively compliance, uh, things that we deal with, uh, you know, outside influences. Uh, but as far as uh, the X and O's, I think uh, what Coach Krzyzewski, Coach K was saying was, there are some terrific coaches out there and who are very much into the game. And, and that's why, you know, as a coach, uh, we feel blessed that we have the position that we have. You know, the, the other thing I, uh, I came across, the other uh, saying that I, I thought applied to today's talk is that uh, the, it was said there's two great days in your life, one when you're born, and the second one is when you find out why. When did you realize you wanted to be a coach? Um, you know, I, I always, I, you know, love of the game, I guess growing up where I grew up, I was always a, a sports person, whether it's football, baseball, basketball. Um, and I guess going into high school, uh, some of the people that I had around me, we, it, it was just kind of a culture uh, that you saw, whether it was the Wally Jones and the, and the Earl Monroe's that grew up in my neighborhood, Will Chamberlain, not that I'm the same age as <laughs> Will, uh, but I used to see him play. Uh, there was a culture there, and you just fell in love with the, the, the way the game, the way they played it, the competitiveness of it, the playgrounds, just to get on a court, you know, how competitive you had to be. Um, but I, I didn't know that I was going to be able to do this for the rest of my life. Uh, you, you would hope so, yeah. but uh, when I got into college, I was going to be a teacher and a coach. That was always my goal. I had so many role models, whether it was Dan Doherty, Billy Hoy, uh, you know, Jack Kraft. All guys that had started out in education and had coached, um, and I was fortunate enough that I became a, um, you know, a coach and be, was able to do this for the rest of my life. 
and a very successful one at that. Uh, Fran, yeah, 300 wins means you've been here a long time, and that's lucky for us. Thanks for spending time with us. Thank you, John.